Ring Montjoy Prison. All right, hold the line there now. Dublin's Mountjoy Prison is one of Ireland's largest prison facilities. Just put five in that one, put two in there. Operating 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. With over 750 inmates and over 700 staff, it's a city within a city. A community hidden from the public gaze, where hardship, humour, heartbreak and humanity live side by side. They're swanky, eh? Everyone who enters the joy, whether they're prisoners or prison officers, must one day leave the prison behind them. For many, the final months and weeks can be the most difficult, with freedom just around the corner. It's a mixed feelings. Uh, excitement down a bit nervous, but uh, you be ready to get out in the morning and you might get out, you know? Getting out is never as straightforward as getting in. This is the joy. Mick, just the driver of that, that bus, when he comes out, just get him to come to the gate to me here. I want to verify something with him. The only way in or out of Mount Joy is through the main gate. Today, it's Officer O'Leary's job to make sure that the entrance remains secure. Between nine and maybe quarter past ten, we will have a lot of vehicles exiting the prison, going to courts. So you could be talking a dozen trucks going out in the space of half an hour. We have to check on the trucks, we have to check on top of them, we have to check inside them. You would see if there was somebody lying on top of a vehicle, that is the reason for that. Uh, it's just a means of looking up on top of a, a lorry that we can't access. Morning, Governor. 5.50. I've had them here. Visitors then, you have to make sure that they're all supposed to be coming in here, that there isn't a chance they're hopping in and hoping for the best. Nearly all the people coming through here now, I would know them. Good morning. Morning. Saeed. 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 <laughs> Saeed. Will you just... Uh, yeah. Morning, Saeed. Just please, Saeed. On the way out, then, you have to be sure, definitely, you have to be more sure that there isn't somebody going out that shouldn't be going out. It happened to me, but he was recaptured very quickly by the guards. Actually, he was recaptured within a day. So, that's one of all the guards. You'll be given a temporary release, right? There's a, a list of things you have to abide by here. Be good behaviour. You don't bring a message in or out of prison. You just have your sober habits. So I'm off the gargle for five days. For five days? Can you manage that, can you? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> that's me. If you can't, then you hang on to you. No, we get six weeks on the way. Prisoners there. leave the joy on a daily basis. <laughs> Some of them finishing lengthy sentences. Some of them after only a few hours. Hang on there, lads. Hang on, hang on. Don't be running away with yourselves. Hang on. You'd see on. The, the, the same prisoners coming in year after year. They come in, do short sentences, back out, back in. I was only out there recently in um, a bread shop, and I met a couple of lads there that were in going into prison. In two weeks' time, they were up for sentencing, and they were all slagging me. It's all seeing two weeks, and it was like it was like a passage way for them. In there, press the button. Go out there. Anyone else would be doom and gloom and hanging their head, no, how am I going to get over this? But there's someone who's coming in and now it's like, a, it, it's just like an inconvenience rather than a deterrent, I think. For inmate Ronnie Emmett, who's serving five years for robbery, experience has taught him that the return to life on the outside is not always as straightforward as it seems. I remember after I'd done that nine years, for six months afterwards, I was homesick for Mount Joy. I was homesick. I used to leave the house in the morning and I'd be walking up the road and it'd take me about a half an hour, like, of in, out in the fresh air to get my head together, like, because I was here for so long at the time, you know. It was the routine, I think, more or less. Like, I'd be starving at 12 o'clock, like, dinner times. Like, I had to adjust. It took me months to adjust the yeah, field time. The field was so rich, like, from my stomach, you know, because everything is steamed and boiled. 
and if you're eating that something something like that for like six years solid, like it's a it's a big change, you know. It's a waste of life. Prison, it's a waste of life. Like I've done everything that you can do. Took every drug you can take, near enough. So if I go on, continue on to that into my forties, if I get another sentence, it's not going to be less than ten years. So I'll be an old man getting out. You know. <laughs> Well, I won't be back. Yeah. I will not be back. Like you leave it, yeah. Just leave that there. I just went for hang around. Sorry, sorry. Over in the training unit, prisoner Connor Gartland has just arrived back from Wheatfield Prison in Clondalkin. He was transferred there over a month ago as punishment. He broke the terms of his temporary release for a college course. I suppose it's a, it's, a, it's a cliche, but you don't know what you have until it's gone. I went into the governor in Weefield and uh, I told him that, uh, that I was told that if I kept my head down that he would bring me back eventually. And the governor said he's heard that hundreds of times. And as far as he was concerned, I was on the long finger. So it's, so it's good to be back. It was a good experience, to be honest. Done me well. Made me realise that I don't want really to come back to them places. How long have you gone? Over a month now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice thoughts, yeah. Right? Yeah, son. I won't try anything uh, on the outside for anything on the outside because of what happened the last time and maybe it's just better off just doing something in house. I'm happy enough with the cell. Could have could have been a wash. Could have been wash. It'll take a couple of days to get to get me sleep right now. No bother, bro. It'll take me a uh, couple of days to get me get me sleep back, and I'll get used to the sound of that. But uh, be grand. Yeah. Several weeks ago, inmate Paul Cummins was sent back to the D2 landing of Mountjoy West after being found with a mobile phone in a cell. Paul has an appeal against the length of a sentence coming up, but he is also being charged with damaging prison property. Look at the pictures. There's the flask man. Hmm. Won't be using that again, will he? The hatch, as the officer said, it was total destruction. So the pain of my four year sentence that I'm doing now, my release date is in January 2017. Which I'm praying, I hope I get a year off and then that let me out in three, four months. Or they could give me something on, uh, consecutive on top of it. And instead of being out January 07, it could be out January 018 or 19. So it's a risk. It's a big risk. But I was only doing it for one person. That was Alana. <laughs> now look at it. She stumped me. And something's telling me not to do it. My good's telling me not to go with it. But I still am like a shoe, but come on. Nah, sure. If it goes wrong, I'll snap. I won't be happy. I'm sitting in here, fucking in these stupid cells for years. On Mountjoy West Sea Wing, Staff are dealing with a prisoner who has decided to go on a very particular type of protest. Quiet! Quiet! I demand quiet! His fellow inmates are far from happy about the situation. It's a bad smell. What have you got on it? Okay. We have an inmate there on cell 14. Uh, he's decided to go on a dirty protest which involves smearing the uh, excrement all over the walls and on his arms and on his body. Not a pretty sight. Have you got a plunger? What, what? It is. He's just a bit all over the place at the moment. He hasn't got a problem with me. I'm not being down talking to him. Just a problem with the system. He's just not getting what he wants. What's the reason why I'm not standing there? He wants to go to a different prison where he's away from other inmates that he knows. 
it doesn't work that way. It's not what he wants. Okay. It's what he gets. That's not the way the prison works. Is it is it a hot chef, Kevin. You having a bit of tea? The ACO in charge of Sea Wing today. What? Is Miss Pimlot. What'd you say? You having a bit of tea? Roger. He was a bit aggressive when the door was open towards the, the ACO. He's not cooperating whatsoever, so unfortunately it's going to have to be a scene org here. Um, so he'll be taken out of that cell and placed downstairs for his own safety. It's morning in Mount Joy, and a tragic incident has occurred overnight. No, there's no, no, no indication. You know, I want prison officer sitting outside the door. Okay, that's right. Thanks for the efforts. Thanks very much. Thanks, lad. Bye bye. Well, this morning, unfortunately, we've had a death in custody. Um, one of our prisoners, located in the B base area, was found at half past six this morning. Um, dead in his bed. The prisoner in question was quite a popular um, prisoner amongst the rest of, of his inmates. So there will be um, a bit of a sombre mood in there now over the next couple of days. Mr Duffy, Mr Barry here, unlock the B-base as normal and no one goes near the cell. ACO Barry is in charge of B-base today and will help to supervise the death in custody protocol on the landing. I was here yesterday myself and uh, the prisoner was fine. He was in his workshop and there was no issues. Apparently he just went in as normal last night around 7.30, 8 o'clock into a cell. It appeared to be fine. And when the night guards were doing their checks at some time during the night, just noticed that there was something untoward with him while he was in the bed. Medical staff attended immediately and uh, an ambulance was summoned um, and uh, Gardaí because the prisoner was found to be unresponsive at that stage. Go ahead for Barry. We're just in waiting now for the coroner's office to remove the remains. Um, but the cell itself um, will have to remain master locked and a guard outside, placed outside the door. Two doors down from the deceased inmate's cell was his own nephew. My first time in jail and all that. And my uncle dies and I like two cells away down with me. Like, my sentence is going to be a lot harder because I was with him every day of the week. Like. In here, I don't know what's wrong. It just doesn't make me cry or anything like that. It's not fair. Like, I, can't, I can't feel nothing. I can't feel nothing at all in my half room. But obviously I can, like. You know, if you see his body, it'd probably fall apart. Honest to God, you can't feel nothing in this place. You're powerless. You know, if it was on the outside, I'd be able to run to my aunties, be able to run to my grandmas, be able to run to his brothers. I was stuck in a cell, you know what I mean? Connor is settling back into the routine in the training unit. He's six months remaining on a five-year sentence for robbery, but he has applied for one-third remission. This means that he could have a sentence reduced by a third if his application is successful. Hopefully that will be dealt with at the end of this month, so that's what I'm waiting on. So if I get my third remission, instead of having six months left, I'll only have six weeks left. So a big difference. It's a mixed feelings, uh, excitement and a bit nervous, but uh, anything can happen, you know. You could be ready to go out in the morning and you mightn't get out, you know. Would you be pretty upset if you didn't get your third remission? Um, I wouldn't say I'd be upset, but be a knockback, but it's prison, like, these things happen.
On Mountjoy West Sea Wing, a prisoner is on dirty protest. As he has refused to cooperate with staff, he must now be removed by the control and restraint team. You've removed his pad, all right? Give him the option. If you want to walk, you can walk. If not, you walk? Okay. You think you're popping any good lad? They have you a move on, you shite boy! They all want to kill him now over what he did, destroying their landing and flooding it and going on dirty protest. And then the inmates then will have to clean it tomorrow with the industrial cleaning team with an officer. They have to suit up then and they have to clean up his mess. So need to say they're not happy with him. have to put on the poncho when you're in the special cell. There is a clean one, we only got that washed last night. He doesn't want to actually be here, he wants a transfer. He owes money for drugs on the other division and he reckons they're out after him. So he wants out of this prison to another prison to get away from it. But more than likely it'll follow him anyway because word will have travelled, he owes them. But he just wants out of the prison because he owes money. Back to change, shower, I'm back in on duty. <laughs> With screen visits enforced in Mountjoy West now for several months, D-wing prisoners have become increasingly desperate for drugs. Dean, disappointed to see you here. You know, yeah, yeah. Myself, yeah. We're dealing with people who had very chaotic lifestyle on the outside. They're not going to suddenly change because they get a prison sentence. When something comes over the yard, look at us. And just have to pick her up, like, you know what I mean? Like, I don't get drugs, like, I'll have an addiction for drugs. As you just know, I have an addiction for drugs. Drugs land in the yard, I'm going to pick them up. Like, I've seen it over the years. The addiction is so fierce. It's absolutely sad to see the, the ravages of, of, of addiction on individuals. It's horrific. Some prisoners are so desperate for drugs that they'll risk their own lives to get them. They use the human pyramid to gain access to, to the net. In the late afternoon then, he made his way up onto the, the main roof of the prison using the tension wires that secure the nets. So. And if, unless you see it happening, you'd never believe that somebody could actually do that. I was actually taken back myself when I'd seen it. He spent the whole afternoon going around, nearly like a pigeon, picking up little bits and pieces. Any drugs that had, had been thrown up onto the roof over a period of the last few weeks or months even, he, he was consuming them as he went along. Obviously the worst case scenario was he was going to fall off the roof. The staff very, very patiently waited for the opportunity to catch him. If it went wrong, it would go very, very wrong. It was very, 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 very delicately timed. It was such, such a relief that he was actually done. That's life in the prison. So many different angles to the drug scene. It's no different to the outside. You have the people who use the, the sale of drugs in the prison as a, as a business. So there's that challenge for us as well. It's a constant battle. You never reach a situation where you've solved the drug problem. You might, you might ease it off yeah, and he has lost something significantly at times, but they'll always find ways of getting it in. Back in the main jail, Chief Officer Burke is busy compiling the death and custody report for a prisoner who died overnight. Down in B base, the guard are inspecting the cell, and the remains have been removed. The deceased has now been brought to the, the city morgue um, for, for post-mortem. The cell in question is considered a crime scene. It's been locked down until the, the coroner is, is satisfied that there is no foul play. 
For inmates, prison life must go on. Prisoner John Kane is housed on the same landing as the deceased and worked alongside him in the fabric shop. He was one of the nicest blokes you could have met, you know? You know what I mean? He had time for everyone. And he was well liked by nearly everyone. Last night, we were actually talking before he went into his cell. He was as happy as Larry. He had things going for him. He went up and he's in appeal. He got an awful lot of time off. He's in appeal. He was really happy about it. And, and then this happens, you know what I mean? You have loads of different stories, OD, alcohol. You can't believe any of them on and it comes out what really happened. It's just one of them things, yeah. It's, it just didn't wake up this morning. It's obvious I'm sad about it, but it's, it's one of the th the, these things, it's a prison thing. It's happened, it's happened. And he will be missed and people will be sad about it, but life goes on. So at the end of the day, you, you come in, you're doing your time, yeah? You, you can't be doing other people's time, yeah? The nephew of the deceased is now hoping that he will be able to properly pay his respects to his uncle. They killed me if I don't go out to the funeral. If they give me an escort to the funeral, well and good, I got something. So better luck I get out for the funeral and give him a proper send off. Because that's what he would have wanted, you know? And that's, that's what obviously I want myself. Like. An inmate has died overnight in Mount Joy. The nephew of the deceased, who was housed on the same landing as his uncle, has just been denied temporary release to attend the funeral. All that the staff can offer him is the opportunity to say a prayer in his uncle's cell. They won't let me out for a funeral, and I'm in here with the last day of months of them. You know? It's a joke, that's what it is. And there's other people out there getting to see their nannies in the hospital. The funeral's tomorrow at half ten, and I won't be getting out for them, unfortunately. So I don't know what I'm going to do. All I can do is go to Mass and say a prayer for them. That's it. That's all I can do. I'll be stuck in this cell now for the next fucking 14 months. Think about me, uncle, yeah, that I wasn't that sure. Like, I'll, I'll never forget this sense. It's just a joke. On Mountjoy West's D2 landing, prisoner Paul Cummins is preparing to travel to the Criminal Courts of Justice to appeal the length of his sentence. Shit, my arm, yeah? Oh, <laughs> shit. <laughs> ah, what has this happened to me? Oh, well, I'm probably saving you trouble, to be honest with you. It's a nervous time for Paul. If his appeal is unsuccessful, he runs the risk of having his sentence extended. Never appeal my sentence in my life, man. I'll be sleeping in a proper bed, i come on back to this bed. Doing longer or less. Hopefully, less. I'm hoping that uh, all goes well. But I'm on top of fucking all be happy. We'll see, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. Prison officers are eligible to retire after 30 years of service. That's us. Right. Happy days. For Officer Kearney and Officer Kelly, today is their last day in the uniform. The last one, there she goes. That's it. 30 years. 30 years. I think you, you, you 
you don't realise till you you come to the near the end. You reflect on it. Yeah, it is a hard job. Mentally, it would be a hard job on people. It's either in you or it's not. Yeah. I definitely will miss the banter with staff. I've made an awful lot of friends over uh, a long, long time. I will oh. miss them. Oh, sure, I was getting texts there this morning and all. Yeah. Fabulous. Yeah, yeah. Nice, That's nice, nice words. Thanks, a million. Yeah, yeah. All right. Good to see you dressed up today. Yeah, do rub me shoes. <laughs> How do you do? <laughs> How are you? Not only are the officers popular figures among staff, but prisoners also have a good rapport with them. All right, buddy. Right, I'm none of this kissing. The job definitely has changed. Conditions in the prison, uh, when I started, uh, would have been uh, very hard, slopping out and uh, the hygiene level of it. It's, a, it's a definitely a more violent place with drugs and tablets and so forth. Thanks, Paddy. I'll see you. Take care. See you. I remember a bit of hash it was a big thing, and then what happened was the heroin crept in, and then uh, the virus, and the, the, they, were, they were definitely dark times in the prison. Sorry you wouldn't be the word uh, mixed emotions. It probably is time to go. Well, I've had great times here. You know, I met, met good people, you know. This is not just you, it's all right. Okay, right. I'll see you again. I wish as well, right? You know, right. And you don't just switch off after 20 years coming into a place, no matter what anyone says. It's sort of part of your life. The job has been good to me. And, uh, yeah, I will miss it. I will uh, miss a, a lot of the friends that I've met, yeah. But that would do. A violently disruptive prisoner has been housed in a specially modified cell in the Challenging Behaviour Unit for the past seven months. ACO Dunn and the staff in the CBU are becoming increasingly concerned with the prisoner's erratic behaviour. Mr Dunn, can you call up to me, please? Uh, that's all the goal now at this stage, so can you call up to me and we clarify everything? We have a prisoner downstairs in our CBU. We've had him for quite a while now in this special cell. Unfortunately, I think he's getting more frustrated. His behaviour has gone downhill quite rapid as well. When he's been requesting water or hot water, as soon as the officer drops the hatch on the cell, the, to give him in water or anything else he's requesting, he's thrown out feet, he's a urine at the staff. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's fine. We can get all that. It's just a transfer order for the CMH. So I want to make sure everything's there. Perfect. Thank you. Cheers. We're going to send him out to the Central Mental Hospital. Uh, he's quite violent and will uh, assault staff if he gets the opportunity. So I think it might be a break that he goes out there and gets the proper help that he needs that we can't give him here. Have you got your suits being organised? Yeah, I have them all. We'll have one more man out to organise. We have the cellular van plus the staff van around the back. And then as soon as everything's in place, I'll go down and tell him where he's going. He has an indication he's going anyway, an inclination, so he sends me down there. Right. Now, he's making the demand that his radio be removed from the wall safe. In other words, yeah. keeps the television in there because it's, it's, uh, he has no access to it. Right. So he says he won't go unless he takes his radio. So I think no, he to take it up. Okay. Yeah. And I'll give him word that his radio will go. He might, he might or might not take my word. I say he will, but either way he will be going. All right. right. Thanks, 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 Cheers. Cheers. Up to 20 prisoners can be transported from Mount Joy to the courts every day. The basement area of the Criminal Courts of Justice is basically an extension of the prison with secure holding cells and a full screening area. Prisoner Paul Cummins 
who was serving four years for robbery, has just arrived to appeal the length of his sentence. Why do you like these judges? They like lifts, they have their ups and downs. The hearing has been put back until after lunch, but Paul has received some unexpected visitors in the courtroom. His on and off girlfriend has turned up, along with members of her family, to show their support. It's tough because uh, my girlfriend's dad was there in the first time I ever seen him. He was in a court, like, <laughs> come on, man, what an impression to make. Like, ah, oh, pure embarrassing. She's there with her two sisters as well. It was nice and like, you know what I mean? Because I've no family of my own, so my mum and dad's dead, so my dad was meant to say to Lana that uh, if Paul wants to be part of this family, we're going to court as a family for him. So it was nice. Just nervous as fuck I am, man. I'm in prison too long to get me hopes up for things when I know can all just go wrong. So I'm not getting me hopes up for him. After an hour and a half of waiting, it's time for Paul to discover his fate. Round two. <laughs> Everyone else gone, Eddie? Oh, he's out the last. He could be walking away with a reduced sentence, but if the appeal fails, his sentence could be extended. Go ahead for Keegan. The time has come for staff to transfer a violently disruptive prisoner to the Central Mental Hospital in Dundrum. Prison transport, Mr. O'Neill, come in please. Prison transport, Mr. O'Neill. Are we ready to go? Yeah, perfect, because I plan to do this nice and fast now. Right, are we ready to go? Due to demands being made by the prisoner, staff have had to come up with a special plan to make the transfer happen. I've suggested that we go ahead as normal as if he's getting the shower. We, because um, he has to place his hands out the cell and cuffs on. Once we have him out of the cell in the cuffs with the CNR team on him, then we'll explain to him that he's going straight out the gate. If we say to him while he's in the cell, he'll refuse to come out. He'll refuse to comply. He won't put his hands out through the hatch to be cuffed, and it's just going to cause more problems. Hopefully, it'll all run smooth. That might be him banging there now. Not sure. Keith Keegan there. No, no, you listen to me. I oh, understand that. I oh, understand. Your stuff will be gone. Your stuff will be gone. Your stuff will... Your stuff will be gone. Okay, take him, take him, lads, take him. Take him. I'll get your stuff for you. I'll get your stuff. They're going to go with you. Right, close it up, take them on. You need that with you. You need that with you. For quite a long time, I thought that prisoner did require to be transferred to the CMH. He does have, for the past couple of weeks, more aggression than he usually has. And when he gets to the stage of wanting this, he's not going unless he gets this or not going unless he gets that. Uh, the simple thing about that is that you just have to commit to move him then and that's it. And when the commitment is made to move him, you move him. The runners on your few bits are in the front of the van, all right? I'm not putting him in there, right? He's been down there for quite a while under the restricted regime that he's been under. And there is a part of it that's nearest for him that he's moving on. But overall, he'd have better medical treatment in the same age. They're more qualified to deal with him than we are here. Yeah. 
staff will now have to clean and restore the cell to its former state. Back at the courts, the appeal hearing of prisoner Paul Cummins has come to an end. His appeal has been rejected by the judges, but to his relief, his sentence has not been extended. Still still the same, same release date. He's then got on top. It's the main thing. The only thing is the girl finds out well, man, to hear everything about me. So, he's about the right moment. Pull a line and I'll sit down the car card door. He was just away 15 months, and probably longer, because I'm about to get a new charge for smashing this up. And that's going to be a consecutive. See, you know, she was a little bit disappointed. Who knows what the future holds for the two of us? I love Egypt, I can't expect that to wait another you know, 15 months. Prison puts too much pressure on relationships and on. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's not fair on them people because they're doing the same as with you. Then when you're in the hoid, you give out to them. Take it out on them, like, because there's no one else to take it out on other than prisoners. Or officers. How are you? Well, I'll see what happens now when I'm going to go back, see what the story is, but uh, I'll know where they stand with. Back in the training unit, prisoner Connor Gartland is also looking for a reduction in his sentence. He's about to hear from Chief Officer O'Connell the result of his application for one third remission. If successful, he'd be getting out in six weeks rather than six months. Where well, we have um, your one third application for enhanced remission back, and I've just got you to sign a copy of it there for me. There's the minister's decision there, so if you can see the minister has considered all the above issues which you've put in your application, including all the material supplied in support of your application, has decided to refuse you the enhanced remission. The fact that you've breached temporary release recently is not satisfied that you're less likely to re-offend and are better able to reintegrate into the community, so yeah. it's bad news there. But on the other side we have reviewed you and uh, the review group have decided to give you an opportunity to better yourself and we're going to give you a job in the work training kitchen which is external to the Mount Joy grounds here so you'll be starting there on Monday. Right that's it then. So well, please. All right. Basically that's just all about the crap. They're just taking boxes. Yes to him, no to him. It's just, it's just the way it is. Disappointed but what can I do? I'm just going to have to I have to go on, get on with it. The amount of money that they spend on a prisoner a year if they would invest that money into the person, instead of me putting you to jail and wait for 70 grand a new year, well maybe I could give you 20 grand of that for you to go and do such and such, go and out in the community or whatever. So you're paying the person to give back to the community while not paying for them to come into prison. So like they could invest that money that they're going to hold the person in prison into their, into their life. You know, that sort of way. So there is ways you could do that, but it'll never happen. Not in my lifetime, anyway.
It's a weird feeling. <laughs> it's Officer Kelly and Officer Kearney's last day in the job. Happy days. Happy days. We're toiling today. They're retiring after 30 years of service. Campus Governor Murphy and prison management are giving them a special send off. On behalf of myself, all the staff here, the management team, even the offenders here, the guys were wishing you well. But that's a testimony to you, your dedicated hard work, professionalism, everything that you've brought to Mount Joy. Thanks for all oh, your thanks, hard and dedicated work. Great, no no tears. Tears. I'm afraid to, I'm afraid to say it and get emotional. Like, you know, yeah. It's hard filling up and all this guy. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's a good job, it's not so much a nice job that we do, but it, like, it is a good job. And I finished up, guys. It's been an absolute <laughs> pleasure and all that. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Uh, you know I'm not a man of many words. <laughs> uh, I'd like to thank everyone here, uh, sincerely. Uh, I've made massive friends and friends for life. Thanks very much. The job has been fabulous to me and I'm delighted I've met you guys, right? Take care. Thank you. Thank you. Keep in touch I will, I will. No, we okay. keep in touch. You, you yeah. know that. Yeah, yeah. Mount Joy, Mount Joy is part of me. When staff retire, they are offered a ceremonial walk at the main gate. This is the only time that all three security gates in the Joy are open at once. That's it, done and dusted then. Okay, it's right behind you. But uh, great memories. Stay smoking out of socket. Did not, did I? Yeah, yeah. yeah. This machine, that's fucked now all together. It just went on fire in the, on the ocean. Just before it was in a few years, man. It's worried up, plated up, down, look. Yeah, it only strikes. The league is a Lucas, and uh, as you said yesterday, the party coming story goes on. <laughs> Thank you very much, I'm going to be able to show you. Thank you very much, I got the same, so you can remember. Because if I didn't, I would have been dead. Being glass and having that knee, I would have made it so, yeah.